Let's talk all about Posca markers. Um, you, if you follow my work at all or my classes, you know that I probably almost always use a Posca marker. And so I wanted to do this video to get more specific on how I use them and just about how they work. Um, so first, let's just talk about the marker. They're an opaque uh, paint marker with acrylic paint inside and they are um, quick drying and blendable when wet. So if you wanted to use to, if you wanted to create, let's say a pale orange, I've got some black paper so it would show up better. You could take this ivory and some orange and as long as they're wet, it blends. I don't do a lot of blending with them, but you can. Good to know. And they are also odorless and non-toxic. They're water-based, so I love that. They never stink. And if you've worked with paint pens before, you know that some are very stinky. Um, here's a brand I tried um, that is definitely stinky. It says odor-free, but it's not. Um, these are made in Japan. It also says France. Hmm, Mitsubishi in France. Interesting. So some of mine have Japanese writing on them, and so I had to pull the ones that have English to talk about the different sizes. There are eight tip sizes, and um, the Posca website is a great resource. I don't have all eight. I have this size. This is the PC1MR. So I'll kind of put them in order of size. Then there's the PC1M. And is this that? Okay, then there's the PC3ML. That's glitter. I only have one glitter. And then the PC, these are the same size though, PC3M. Then the PC5M. And then this fat guy is the 8K, PC8K. And there is a larger one. And then there's a brush marker, and I think that would get you the eight sizes. So I have six of the eight. No, because these two are the same. I only have five of the eight sizes. So, and I think it's plenty. I don't, I don't know that you'd need the other sizes. Uh, so now, let's talk about the nibs, because sometimes they misbehave. But you can... You know, if it's misbehaving on the one side, for certain size, for both the PC5 and the PC3, you can reverse the nib. So let me show you. I don't want to get my fingers all mucked, so you can pull it out and put it in the other way. And that helps if you end up clogging it or if it just gets dry. You can also take the nib out if it's misbehaving and soak it in water. Literally just put it in water and then put it back in and get it working again. If you have a size like I think this one where the nib doesn't come out. Let me see if it does. Oh it does but it doesn't have the chisel at the other end. So but if you have one say this size this is a a pen basically and um, then you can just put the whole pen in water you know in a water jar and soak it let me get some paper towel so they do get fussy I mean there's there's no question especially when you use them the way I use them you you know I'll find that like this one right now is flooding see so you just want to make sure that you test it out on a scrap piece of paper before you go on your where you want to use it and get the right level of priming so you're shaking like this and then you are pumping to get it to work the way you want and if you don't shake it enough the ink can be watery so I don't know if you can tell here, but see how where I first started with that white, it was watery, I hadn't shaken it. So now it's nice and opaque. 
So you just have to shake and use them that way. Um, let's see, I wanted to talk about, so the Posca website tells you they're best stored horizontally, but I just like being able to, I'll show you how I store them. They're not horizontal, they're vertical, because I wanna be able to grab, see the color, and if I laid them down, then I'm you know constantly sifting through the box to find the color I want. And it doesn't seem to hurt them um, the way I'm storing them. So let me talk about the sizes because I often get questions about, you know, if I'm only buying so many, uh, how much or what size do I need? And it really depends on how you like to work. So if you want, you know, a white liner or a liner type mark, then this PC1MR is really a just like a regular pen thickness. I think I have this on the white, maybe the off-white, and maybe the gold. But for the Posca markers, I'll show you. The metallic gold is not my favorite. I'll give you a comparison. When it comes to metallic gold, I go with the Pilot um, gold marker in these two sizes. I'll show you the difference. Um, get it nice and shaken. And I'll just do a couple leaves and show you. So Posca's gold is just not as metallic. It is a little bit greeny and it just doesn't give me that real gold foil feeling that I want. You know, I want it to look like, wow, that's almost like I applied metallic gold or gold foil. Here's the larger one. And I'm finding these performing pretty well. I will say these are a little stinky. They, um, so if you're sensitive to, I mean, I would say I am sensitive to odors, but this doesn't bother me. But look at the difference and the look at that that's the pilot and that's the Posca it's just kind of a greenish it's just not very metallic -y. so I don't really recommend their metallics everything else I do recommend all right so back to size so you have the PC1 MR which like I said gives you a nice very uh, thin line and predictable size. Then you have the, well, the, what I have is the PC one M. This is the one MR. This is the one you can see it's a little, it's quite a bit thicker and that will do, I better shake this. Oh, it doesn't show up on the, let me get some white. I mean, this is, I would say just as thin, this PC1, bullet shaped. And this is pin type, so I think that's the difference. This is the slate gray, so it's the, the nib style, so either one would work. I would say this pin shape tends to get clogged up more than, my, than the bullet. The next size up is the PC3ML, and Posca will give you this range, 0.9 to 1.3 millimeters. That means that depending on the pressure you apply, you can get, you know, a range of sizes, right? Like any marker. So I can be light like this. This is the, the sparkly color I have. It's called red glitter. It's, it's very subtle, the glitter. I mean, it's hardly noticeable. Or I can press harder and get a little bit thicker line. Doesn't look much thicker. 
I've had, I'm able to do that with, um, let's see, let me try another size, another color in the 3M. Let's see this light pink, so I can do a light line, or I can press harder. Yeah, it's more obvious in this one. So that's why they tell you the range. So I would say, it, depending on how you like to work, if you're gonna do line work, then this is a great size, this 3M size. If, you're, if you like to fill in shapes, then you're gonna want the thicker size. So let's just move up and talk about that one. This is the one that's all in <laughs> Japanese. So let me grab one that's in English. Okay, this is the PC5M and it makes a, a mark from 1.8 to 2.5 millimeters. So here would be a thinner version of it with a light touch and then more pressure I'll give you this. So you can see that if you want the color in, you know, although when I'm coloring in sometimes I grab the thinner one because you can see I'm not able to get into those spaces. So it just depends how large you're working you know, are you working on big canvases? Are you filling in? Are you actually, you know, filling in shapes or are you using more, more for lining? The reason that I got this big, this is the next size the, that I have, the PC8K, and that makes an eight millimeter mark, is because I will like to sometimes go into a background. I'll show you on this one. This is a from the um, work in progress drawer where I start paintings and then come back to them sometimes months later because this obviously needs some definition and so forth. So I might use this guy in some way like, let's see here, to kind of color in the background of somewhere. Let's see, maybe, you know, to kind of go over something like that, or maybe I'll come over here and by the way you can do something like this, scratch in it, that was a chopstick by the way, or you can use the back of a brush, make marks. So that's sometimes how I'll use this really fat one. And I only have, I think I have it in this color and this off-white, oh, that's not it. In the off-white, the ivory. Ivory and white. But of course that depends on you as well. Uh, so you can see actually on this piece that I've used Posca here, 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 this teal, this is one of my favorite colors, this turquoise Posca. There's enough of it on here, but just to show you how I might come through, you know, with a little bit more. And I usually use the Poscas aft on the upper layers of my work. So I'm, I don't use a lot at the lower layers. Here you can see I did some squigglies with one, but I'm, I'm not gonna use them if I'm gonna end up covering up a lot of it just because they're pricey and there's just no reason for me to do that. But like on this little painting, I see here that I used the sparkly one there and it's making me think it'd be fun to kind of outline some of these. So I also use it, let's see here, I'll show you, this is a painting that we do in my, my newest class I'm filming, which is not, I uh, hope to have done in a couple of weeks, but it's going to be colorful abstracts. Let me make sure it's wet. Um, but you can see that I've used Posca on this uh, here. This is the sparkly Posca. There as well. Here, there, and then these off-white dots are all done with the Posca. So I, like I said, I use them in just about everything. I'll come through my sketchbook like this, 
and look at a page like this and say, okay, what else do I want to do on this page? You know, maybe I'll take my green. This is apple green in two different sizes. It's a warm green. And I could come through with something like this. You know, with that, or I could take the pink and do some shapes. Now, see, okay, see, that's a good example. It's watery there because I didn't shake it and it wasn't really getting going. So just make sure you see how the opacity difference. And you can go over with multiple coats to get the effects that you want. You let it dry and do another coat if you want. Um, yeah, let's see if there's other examples. I guess I didn't use them much here. A little bit here. Did I? Or maybe just for some of these subtle marks here with the turquoise. All right, so let's talk about colors. My favorite colors are the turquoise. This is called aqua green. I use this a lot. See how opaque that is? Um, this is a really nice color, the light pink. I do like this apple green. I'll show you another green that I don't like as much. See, because it's a nice, warm, bright green. I don't use this one as much. This, oh, this one's in Japanese. <laughs> I don't know. I order them from different places. I don't know why um, some don't have any English on them and some do. But this is, see, it's, it's a pretty green, but it's just a cooler green. And then... Here, let me flip this over. And this will be a great background <laughs> for something. <laughs> All right, let me just, yeah, let me just turn it over so I have space. This is, ah, in Japanese, but it's a bright pink, but it's not a fluorescent pink, which I also have. That, the fluorescents, by the way, have the black, top. Let me show you. I've got a couple of them. So you see how it has the black top and the others have the, the color of the marker. So the ones that are different, like this one, which is bronze or metallic, where'd that metallic gold go? Have a black top. See? So anything kind of, it seems like they do anything unusual. So fluorescent, metallic, um, but not glitter. That doesn't make sense to me. Has the, um, the black top. So let's show you the bronze as well, but I wanna show you this fluorescent first. It's, I use it a lot. And then I have a fluorescent yellow. I don't know why I bought this fat fluorescent yellow. I, I do use the smaller one, but I don't know why. And it really just feels like a, okay, I've got to shake it, like a highlighter. I think you could get away with using a highlighter. Come on, you. Well, it's not recommending itself, is it? Here it comes. I mean, you could do some cool things with that, but I don't know. I don't think that color in this size is necessary. Here's a yellow. 
in Japanese. I can't give you the color name, but it's just a basic medium yellow. This orange is, oh, they call this bright yellow orange, okay? Um, and there's another orange that's darker in Japanese, but you can see that it's got a darker. One of my favorite colors is this coral pink. So I would say so far my favorites or that I use a lot would be the coral pink, the turquoise, and the ivory. I just use these ivory a lot when I'm outlining more than the white. Here's the bronze. It is pretty shiny. Not like, you know, the pilot markers, but it's it's a warm metallic. Let's see what else haven't I shown you. This is called emerald green. I don't use it very often. It's pretty dark turquoise. It's pretty though. Maybe I should use it more often. That's really pretty. Uh, red. Dark red and regular red. Here's the dark red. And that's in the 3M size. And then this is in the five size, regular red. A nice opaque red. Here is fuchsia. That's really bright and pretty. I probably should add this to my wish list, this color, for the next size up because I could see coloring this in. You know, that's a really pretty color. And it, the Posca website says, let's say you want to blend that. Let's say, say for some reason you want to make a, a, a pale pink. And of course you're gonna, let's say you added a little bit of white. You're gonna muck up your tip, but they say just rinse it in water and then rub it off, no harm. So that's how you, an example of blending. Uh, let's see some more odds and end colors. This is the khaki green. They have 55 colors. I, I don't know how many I have. You can't see that, let me do that on the white. Khaki green is really dark. I don't really use it much but it might be a color you really like. Let's see. This is red wine. Hmm. The ball doesn't sound loose. There it goes. <laughs> of course there's black. It's a pretty color. Red wine. This I just got recently, it's in Japanese, but it's a sort of pale peachy color. I have this blue, which is, it looks like the tip is not feeling, oh geez. Okay, so let's try something. Let's try seeing if this size, if I can flip that nib around. The other thing I could do is if it keeps flooding like that, that helped. There you go. But I could um, take the whole thing and just rinse it in water and soak it and just in case something's clogging it. Um, it's a pretty blue. Sorry, I can't tell you the color. It's not in English. Uh, let me show you this gray. This is a really nice kind of stone gray. It's not wanting to prime. 
it, it's dried up too. Let's try to fix this one. <laughs> to, to have paint markers is to learn how to make them better. They claim that they have a technology to keep them from clogging and so forth. And they are better than most in that regard, but none are perfect. Well, look at that. Just by flipping the nib, we're refreshing all night. Now that, yeah, that's in Japanese. I'm going to read you the colors if they're on there. I think we already did this one. I think it's the same as that one, just a smaller size. Yeah. I think that's probably all the colors that I have. I joke about these being about the cost of a fancy coffee. And so if I pass on the fancy coffee, I think of it as getting a new color. I'll show you, I guess I haven't shown you these three colors. And there's a dark green here. Okay. This is, let's see, Japanese, Japanese, and this one's in English, navy blue. This is a new purchase. I love navy for accenting, and this is the perfect shade of navy. Sometimes navy, they claim it's navy, and you'll get it, and it's like a mm, ultramarine blue, but this is a true, beautiful navy, so I would put that on my list of favorites along with, uh, let's see, the turquoise. I love this pink. The coral, where'd you go, coral? Here you are. The ivory. What would I say? You know, it's a personal preference, so these are the colors I love right here. This is just a blue, a dark blue, but not too bright, too. I mean, maybe you could blend with it but that's just too primary blue for me. This is a purple. And a dark green. Kind of a Kelly green, not too dark. So I hope that helps answer questions about Poscas. They claim on the website they've been tested on 50 surfaces. That means glass, metal, uh, rocks, you name it, and they also say that they're permanent, and I do find them to be permanent. So like this one, which we did, you know, this is dry. This is not coming, I mean, I could probably scrape it off, but it's not really wanting to come off. And um, of course, I varnish my work anyway, so it wouldn't come off. But yeah, they're, they're good. I, I've tried this brand, like I said, uh, I've tried the cheaper brands, you know, like on Amazon, and they're either stinky or they clog even worse. Now here's one. I haven't tried too many of these, and Liquitex is a good brand, so I haven't used it in a while. Let's see what it's like. I, I picked it up at the art store thinking, well, you know, let's see what this brand is like. And it's uh, light pink. It's got a chisel tip. Seems pretty watery, but that's probably because I haven't used it in a while. Pretty color. You could give those a try. Water-based, permanent, same, same principle. Okay, well, uh, I have a link to, I think it's an Amazon set that for whatever reason on Amazon is cheaper than the art supply stores for a basic set of Poscas. I think I have a link on my website to that. Uh, other than that, I pick them up when I'm in, a, in an art store, you know, and I want to try a new color. Did I show you this light gray? Yeah, that's a lighter. Yeah, I guess I did. That's the same as that one. Oh, here's the dark gray. Slate gray. It's labeled. That's a nice dark as well. All right, have fun creating, and I have lots of other videos on supplies and tutorials and all kinds of fun stuff. So enjoy. Keep creating. <laughs>